I think uh, you know China and China's economy is obviously of great interest uh, to the world, to us, to, to its profoundly of interest to the Chinese. Um, I think that uh, they have a lot of tools uh, that they have it, uh, to, to, to continue to, to grow, but they have to make the right policy decisions. Um, the challenge they have is the trade-offs between reform and, and short-term growth, and I'm certainly going to encourage them to stay on a reform agenda. They need to open their markets. They need to have a level playing field so that there's market-determined prices and uh, th there can be competition between domestic and international goods and services. Uh, Do you think and it's more that, likely they'll stick with that reform well, rather than short-term stimulus? Know, I, I think I think that it, they, it, they obviously have to worry about their short-term economic uh, uh, situation. Uh, we all have to balance short and long-term uh, decisions we make. What they can't do is treat the long-term reforms as something that they can just put off. Right. And they need to be serious about it. They know they need to be serious about it. They know that their economy, if it doesn't move more towards market uh, determined prices and, and, and signals um, is not going to give them the medium and long-term growth they need. Some so worry that some has, their property prices are falling and I see some experts say that there's the prospect that China is in a bubble that's about to burst that it will affect the global economy. Is that a real danger now? Look, I, I think that um, <laughs> you know there are a lot of challenges that China has to deal with. China has a lot of capacity to deal with its challenges uh, internally so I, I think that the question is whether they manage some of the things Things going on in their in their economy, whether it's some price fluctuations in housing, or whether it's shadow banking, uh, or state and local uh, their local provincial finance, they have the capacity to deal with it. They they they, they need to, to deal with it. You don't see so, them in a bubble right now. Uh, look, I, I I think that they have challenges they have to deal with. Uh, it to you know, they focus on jobs. Uh, they, are they creating enough jobs? Uh, and I think that if they stay on a path where they're creating jobs. Uh, they have more license to do the reforms that they need to do, uh, which is what is needed for China to grow and for it to be a level playing field so that U U.S. companies can compete in China. Mr. Look, my, my focus in China from a U.S. perspective is very clear. We want there to be uh, a market that U.S. firms, financial firms, and manufacturing firms, services firms can compete in. And we bring that to the table every time we engage with uh, China. We also look at exchange rates. Exchange rates is an extremely important issue. Uh, you know, we have encouraged them. Are for, they living up to their currency commitments? Well, we, you know, they have uh, made some moves that are consistent with, uh, with moving towards more market determined rates. They widen their trading band, but we've seen some very negative movement in the uh, exchange rate in recent months. One of the issues that I'm going to bring to them is if your policy says that the exchange rate can go up and down, you need to have market signals determining uh, whether it's going up or down. Be a topic and that's, gonna, that's a serious conversation because it has to do with the competitiveness of U.S. goods uh, in China. Uh, Mr. Secretary, I suspect another topic. Russia plans to turn to China for money or ask China for money investments to compensate for what they're losing with the sanctions from the U.S. and the EU. Are you going to pressure, urge your, your Chinese counterparts not to go along? Yeah, Al, we talk about a wide range of topics when, when we meet. Um, I'm going to bring the uh, topics that are central to the U.S. agenda, and uh, they will raise topics of concern to them. Um, I think that, uh, you know... Uh, well, this could certainly be, yeah. be central to us, wouldn't it, if they're going to compensate for the loss uh, uh, of, uh, of, of money in Russia because of the US we, we, and we, have, we have been uh, making the case uh, consistently wherever we go uh, that, um, that it is unacceptable for Russia to violate Ukraine's sovereignty and that when we take actions and other countries in the world take action, um, it is important for there not to be backfill. Uh, and we would not be happy then if the Chinese were to well, it, 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 it is an argument I make uh, wherever I go. And you'll make it in Beijing. Well, it, it, I, you know, I, we're, 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 we're going to talk about a whole range of topics. How about, let's talk about uh, Putin and Ukraine. Why not impose tougher sectorial sanctions now rather than wait? And if so, would they apply to a wide swath of financial and energy industries or be more targeted specifically? You know, Al, I think that the steps we've taken with regard to Russia have been very carefully determined and they've been quite effective. Uh, we have acted to target people in the Russian government, uh, senior executives, CEOs who run some of the largest manufacturing firms in Russia who are very close to the government. And we've sanctioned a bank, uh, making it clear that we are prepared to go farther down this path should we need to.